Okay, so we're now in the Android sandbox area. I'm going to spend some time in this area because there's a lot going on, but we're going to start with just features of the OS. And uh, David here is going to tell us about a couple things I've been really curious about. Can we start with uh, Kotlin? Let's talk about Kotlin. Sure, Kotlin is definitely the show stealer, it seems to me, from watching the uh, keynotes. So Android Studio now has Kotlin support. You can create a new project, and you'll see that you have the ability to check Kotlin support in from the beginning. We already have a Kotlin app here, but you can also write Java code and convert it to Kotlin very simply. And do you like writing Kotlin? I love writing Kotlin. I actually haven't gotten a chance to write Kotlin recently, but when it was when I was first learning about it a year ago, I spent a lot of time just going through the language and getting very excited about it just because it looked so much more concise and it brings in a lot of modern features that I like from a lot of other languages. Mm -hmm. And I was really happy to see how fast they moved on it and the great tooling support that IntelliJ brought into it as well. Yeah, I mean, I've been talking to people around the festival today, and one of the things they keep saying is how well designed they believe Kotlin is and what a mature language it is because of that. Yeah, no, it's absolutely, I feel like they got a lot of influences from a lot of new languages. I highly recommend trying it out, give it a shot. And Catherine, uh, you've been working on bringing Kotlin into Android for a little while. Can you tell us uh, what the motivation for that was? Yeah, um, so I think the big reasons we wanted to bring Kotlin to Android were that, like David says, most developers who try it find it to be really concise and expressive, and it has a lot of awesome features like type and null safety, which are really useful for writing stable, non-crashy apps. Um, plus, it's totally compatible with the existing Android environment and also with the Java language, which means that even if you have a large existing Android code base, it's really easy to incrementally adopt it. And you can kind of try things where it works. You don't have to go rewriting large swaths of code. That's awesome, being able to incrementally adopt it, as you were saying. So you don't have to sort of jump in and refactor everything all at once. Yeah, exactly. Like If you have some chunk of Java you're happy with, you can just leave that, keep modifying it, write some new module in Kotlin, and kind of adopt it very organically you know, as you see fit. Awesome. Oh, and then I think the final thing is just, we've been hearing about from more and more developers that they love it, it really makes them happy to write in it. And you know, we try to listen to our developers and give them things they love, so hey. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I want to look at something else as well, David, uh, the profiler in Android Studio. Can you show me something there? Sure, we're really excited about the profilers. I feel like this is a long time coming. If you look here, you can actually see that this is displaying bitmaps, it's a sample Android app. We downloaded it as is, we didn't modify it at all. And if you look over here, you can actually see we've already started the profilers on it. We have the CPU, memory, and network profilers. So if I start to interact with the app, you'll start to see the different profilers oh, wow. from on. Yeah. So you can deep dive into any of them. Um, you can sample CPU activity. Here, we can click on some stuff. And then what you'll see is if you drag across there, you could actually look at the content of the uh, request. This is actually an HTTPS request, and you can still see the contents of it, which is something that we're very excited about, uh, because that was normally a challenge for a lot of people to try to do. I think some people would debug in uh, kind of HTTP traffic in order to see it, and so we've sort of enabled some new features here, which we're happy about. Oh yeah, I'm used to like inspecting the traffic on the machine that I'm testing on to try and get that debug information, and yet here it is right in studio. That's so convenient. Yeah, I really hope that people have a chance to play with it. We hope that they find the profiler is intuitive, I mean, to me, what's exciting is as you're messing around with your app, you might, all of these things that were invisible before, you now have a chance to actually play around with it and see it. And as I said, we, we don't even think, we're including documentation with it, but we're even hoping that even without it, you should just be able to uh, play around and, and try things out and see what happens and then learn more about your code. We were once debugging some code and we're like, no, something's wrong here. We're getting this weird memory spike and we were actually, we were surprised to find that all along this code had a problem with it, but we didn't know about it until we had written our own profilers. That's profiling. There you go. Awesome. David, thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you very much. A few people online have been asking me to get a demo of Pitcher and Pitcher. So I found Rob, and he's going to give that to us. Hey, I'm Rob from the Android Window Manager team, and I've been working on uh, Picture and Picture for this release. We're really excited about it because Android, you know, it's always been a good platform for interacting with content, watching YouTube, et cetera. But if you want to start to interact more deeply and multitask, we haven't always provided the tools. And I think picture-in-picture picture is a great one. So I'll walk you through a way of using it. Uh, 
So here we have this video, and it's a Go Game by Lisa Dole, the player who famously challenged AlphaGo last year. And we can see if we go back to home, we'll get the video, and it's still playing here. We can move it around. And for example, I could go into my Go app, and I could start to multitask, and I could play the game along. Oh, that's so cool. So that I could, uh, you know, play along with the game and begin to explore my own variations. And I can dismiss tip when I'm done. That's awesome. That's Android picture in picture. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Cool, thank you. Everybody's talking about Kotlin, so I was able to get some more info out of Andre from JetBrains. Hi, Andre. Hello. So first question, you've been working with the Android team for a while. What are you most excited about with this collaboration? Well, this is very great to be here because basically this means that uh, very many people will be coming to Kotlin, new users, new, well, new exciting uh, ways of using the language, new learning materials, new libraries, everything. So it's basically Kotlin's growing as we are looking at it. And it's, it's altogether wonderful. I'm very grateful to the Android team that they had the courage to make the move. But th that was, uh, as they say, that was what the public was actually wanting them to do. So we're very happy about it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the future and what's coming next. First, the language. What's coming next with the Kotlin language? Uh, there are actually many things we're uh, working on, but uh, so the, the brand new thing with Kotlin is coroutines. We have uh, shown the experimental design pretty, uh, yeah, it was like three, three months ago. So coroutines are a big thing now, uh, doing asynchronous programming in an easy way. So we're now looking into improving that and finalizing the design so that the next version of Kotlin will probably have it already uh, stable so everybody can use it uh, and be sure it will work for all the versions. Then the next big thing is multi-platform Kotlin. So Kotlin is now big on Android, big on the server side. Uh, we are working on JavaScript and we have recently introduced native, which is in a technical preview version now. Uh, so we're trying to span the language across many platforms and enable multi-platform development where you can say uh, have uh, a couple of modules reused for many platforms and then some platform specific modules uh, implementing some functionality in a specific way uh, that's leveraging the intricacies of the, of the platform. So it's a very big, uh, big direction for us. And then there are uh, language only things like uh, value types for example for optimal storage or collection controls. So we're, we have very many directions there. Uh, and the strategic ones are those, you know, platform things and the core teams. Awesome. What about tooling? What's next there? Yeah, so uh, we're actually, JetBrains is all about tooling. So our, like, uh, first and foremost goal with Kotlin w was making the language toolable. And now we're uh, in a pretty good shape with many things, but uh, there's a long road ahead. Uh, we are now tightly integrated with Android Studio and we'll work more on that. So in uh, uh, 3.0 preview, we have new wizards for creating things and we have unified analysis for Java and Kotlin and we'll improve that. We're working on the incrementality of the tool chain, so uh, Google side as well as JetBrains side. And uh, for non-Android things, we're doing pretty much the same. We're uh, basically getting on par with Java on the uh, Java platform. We're uh, working on debuggability and incrementality for JavaScript. Native is very young for, for that, but we'll get all that there too. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you very much.